scratching your skin. It was it was a horrible experience. But um, yeah, the seal made up for it. I was like, that's super cool. You got to get to Tokyo, Shane. You won't believe what you see in the stupid cheap prices. Second hand is crazy cheap there. I've heard lots of good things. Actually, it's funny because um, Kafir, uh, who you probably know from YouTube, he and I have been talking about going there for probably two years now. So we might do a big trip over there at some point and check them all out. He's always like, oh, we should go do that. So I might contact him again, see if he wants to go because he's such a nice guy who can sort of like vlog it or something. Yeah, I think he'll he'll be still in for that. He He's a great player. If you don't know Kafir's channel, it's K-F-R-I and then O on the end for his last name and yeah which is a great play he's got like probably by now i don't know one and a half million subs or something it's crazy great player really great player um greetings from the netherlands looking for a tally with p90s was thinking of a fender ja90 i don't usually i don't do fancy hybrids that much but this one seems interesting any thoughts on that you know, if you like it, man, I mean, look, try and, if you can, try and play one. The only other guitars I've played that have good sounding P90s in like a solid body guitar like that were from Tom Anderson. Um, probably more expensive, I think. I can't remember. It was like a long time ago now. But those guitars were great. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, I would say the Tom Anderson ones, or, or if you can find a Fender one you like, do it. I mean... You just got to make sure you like the P90s because they're, they're a unique sort of sound and inherently they'll buzz more than a lot of other pickups. That's my experience with them. Um, so yeah, I don't know that one specifically. Let me have a let me have a quick look. I may have seen it before. Sometimes I I just can't remember the I can't remember the model numbers. Let me have a look. Yeah, I've not played one of these before, so they look pretty cool. Um, yeah, try and play one before you you buy it would be my suggestion, because you just never know. You might go, oh, I wish I had got humbuckers. Um, I don't know how good Fender P90s are from experience. I haven't really played too many Fender P90 guitars before. I know I don't like their wide range humbuckers at all, like. Fender make terrible thin line tally style humbuckers. They're just not very nice. Um, there's exceptions to that, but this is just production model stuff that they don't sound great. So yeah, just double check. So make sure you like the feel and obviously the sound. If you do, you're good to go. You don't want to buy it and then go, oh man, I should have got a Gibson or, or an Epiphone or something else. Jellyfish stings are nasty. Yeah, they are, man. Yeah, the guy gave me some vinegar. It's funny because I, I thought I saw it in the water and I went, oh, man, lucky I didn't get stung. And then I got out. And there was a few of them in the water and they they float just below the surface. So they're a bit hard to see. And they, they were only there that one day. But um, I got out and I was like, oh, my calf, my leg feels a bit on the front of my shin sort of thing. Feels a bit funny. And it was the weirdest thing, like over the course of the next 48 hours, just on my, on the area where the, you know, the tentacles or whatever got my leg, it was sweating out of just those areas. Like I would towel it off. It was just the weirdest feeling. Like I'm like, man, my leg feels wet. I'd touch it. And I was only like cold sweating from the area that the thing touched my, uh, my leg. It was it was horrible. I couldn't sleep that night either. It was really uncomfortable. So next day I went and got some stuff for it and it kind of helped. But yeah, huge, huge pain. Yeah, there you go. Boris the German says, if you're going to get P90s, get an SG. That would be a good move. I, I really think like Gibson, Epi you know, any of those kind of pickups you find in a Gibson or Epiphone generally sound pretty great. So yeah, I, I agree. That would be a, a better choice. Um, although, you know what? I, I don't know. I haven't played that guitar, so it, just trust your ear would be my suggestion too. But yeah, good point. I, I totally agree with that. 
Uh, Tony says, glad you got to return to the States. Uh, equally glad you missed the recent winter storms. Brutal. Really enjoy the live streams. Thanks, man. Um, it was funny to get away. You know, I was just expecting the worst. So for those who don't know, the trip I had booked like 18 months ago, <laughs> or however long ago it was now, uh, it's just sitting in oblivion still. That airline isn't flying overseas. So I got nothing out of that. It was just a huge waste of money. And the airlines must be the only business in the world where they can not provide you the service. I know it's just kind of out of their hands to some extent, but you'd get nothing back. It's like the money just disappears. So, um, yeah, that, that was brutal. So I was, I was thankful that the trip actually worked and got a chance to get out and about and just to have some downtime as well. But, um, yeah, so thank you, everybody, for all the support in December and January. I don't know what date the last live stream was, but... Um, yeah, thank you for being a part of this. Um, Yamaha Pacifica 331 electric guitar, P90 in the neck. You know, Yamaha Pacificas are great. I, I agree. They make some really good stuff. So I've never played a lefty of that particular model, but I know it. I actually saw one today. They're very, very good. So, um, yeah, that's another good choice. Absolutely. Ha. Yeah, Raphael says, you live in the most dangerous country in the world regarding animals and you get stung in Hawaii. Yeah, I was the only one. I was the only idiot to, to have that happen. There were two main beaches and one of them had a sign saying no jellyfish. Uh, no, no, like, be careful, jelly. there's jellyfish. But there wasn't a sign on um, the one we were at and, yeah, it was brutal. Hey, thank you, uh, Remco. Uh, uh, Remco, sorry, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's uh, 1999. I think that's euros, man. That's like two grand here in Australia. Thank you. <laughs> now, thanks for the support, mate. And also, thank you for the channel members as well who are here, the mods and everybody, uh, all the regulars and Patreon crew. Thank you. I'm going to put everybody's names in the credits for the Guitar Search Saturdays coming up. My plan on future live streams is to also just have a splash screen thanking everybody. I was going to try and do that tonight. It didn't work out because it was like a last minute, last minute thing. Funnily enough, as I was kind of unwinding, I opened up this thing I forgot was like pre-workout in the fridge. So I'm like glugging it down. I'm like, oh no, that's a lot of caffeine. So I thought we'll do this tonight. So next time I'll have a, a thank you screen for everybody as well. And, and Remco, thank you again for the support. Appreciate it. If you have any questions, just add in the blues me and I will, uh, I'll keep an eye out on the chat. Um, thoughts on the Shawbucker 1 and 2? Shawbucker, let me just double check. These are the... Are these the... You know what? I. That's another... That's another guitar pickup that I haven't played. I think they sound fine. I just haven't had any lefty experience with them. Um, so yeah, I, again, that's you're gonna have, with pickups. You kind of got to trust your ear, but I, I haven't tried them personally. No. So I know when Rick and I have done like keys to the guitar shop videos, he's played fenders with humbuckers, or or even some of the squires that have humbuckers in the bridge. But I don't know if. I've ever actually tried that particular model, so I'm sorry, uh, Bullets, I'm not too sure. Reverend offers some great P90s. Reverend guitars are great. A really highly underrated electric guitar brand. I don't know what it is about their, their place in the market, Reverend guitars. It's weird. It's like they remind you of everything else, but at the same time... They're quite a bit different. It's weird. They remind me of Gretsch. They remind me of Gibson. They can remind me of bloody... Like every type of guitar. Fender. They've got that tally. The, I forgot the name of it, but we put it up on the keys of the guitar shop. And yeah, it was like... They just, they sort of remind you of everything, but at the same time look different. It's a strange old brand. Benjamin says, we'd love to have you back in Michigan one day. It's been so long. The last time I was there was 2002. 
And the first time I was there was in 1999, where I worked at one of those summer camps. And uh, that was a long time ago. I really want to get back to Petoskey at one point in time. Uh, it's such a beautiful place, or my recollection of it from back then. So, yeah, that'll have to be on the cards coming up at some point. I'd love to drive around that state again. I love the whole, uh, you know, the uh, the lakes and the, the trees. It's, it's beautiful. Except there's no hills. <laughs> it's like the least hilly place in the world. But it's beautiful. Um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Trace Youngs. I appreciate that. He says, good morning from Michigan. And I second Benjamin's comment. Let us know what time it is there too. I thought it might be, it's probably like really early, right? I'm, I'm tipping. Um, have you ever done any baritone guitar videos? Um, no, I've never seen a lefty. Uh, and if I ever get a chance to play one, I 100% will. But as it stands, I've not found a lefty baritone in any brand as a left-handed guitar player. I'm almost considering learning how to play right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> just for videos or whatever the case may be right I, I i would love to learn how to just flip a right-handed guitar up and actually spend some time reversing all the chords in my head i reckon i could do it if i sat down for a good amount of time maybe a month it doesn't i can play bass upside down pretty competently but i know that's a lot different but I, it's almost just like learning new chords but you already know the shape, so it's you've got a slight advantage. But I, I, yeah, there might be on the cards coming up, but just hang in there. I'm almost st stupid enough to try that. Hey, thank you, uh, Tony. I appreciate that, mate. He says, any new posters on the accent wall? You usually have a good story to go with them. Not yet, but I plan on putting some more on. I've actually got a few that I printed out at the same time I revamped this and had them all laminated and stuff. Um, I had some different ideas for posters, uh, for, for this whole wall. Um, but I need to make sure I can find either the ones I'm looking for or, or I won't replace them, but hang in there. There'll probably be some new ones. I don't think I changed anything recently on here. No, the only one I changed a while back, actually I added two. I changed this Mark Knopfler one a while back now. I used to have like an older photo of him, like a more recent one. Uh, so he's like probably in his 60s or whatever. But uh, yeah, that one was, I think, with the most recent alongside with the Fun Loving Criminals one, which is one of the best bands, man. If you don't know Fun Loving Criminals, go check them out. Um, the lead guitar, or the guitarist is the sort of singer. And he's it's like a good mix of musical styles. It's got like... It's almost like, ur I guess, urban kind of music, but he's a great guitarist and there's some, it's like a good mix of stuff. If you don't like one of their songs, the next one, you probably will. It's one of those kind of bands. But uh, yeah, I, I need to sort of mix up the wall coming up and it, it's on the, it's definitely on the cards. I was thinking about it the other day. Tony, again, thank you, mate. I appreciate that. And uh, hang in there for some, hopefully for some updates. Michigan lakes have no jellyfish. No, they, they don't, but they have a lot of ice at the bottom of the lake there. That water is so cold. Yeah, I remember we were doing some canoeing and one of the dudes I was with, he um he just started rocking the thing and it went over. He did it intentionally and it was brutal. It was like, it was the coldest water that I can remember. That was right after it stopped snowing. So we were there in like April. <laughs> So, yeah, it was cold. It, it was brutal. Anyway, it was funny, but it was not fun. Um, have I ever tried humbucker-sized P90s? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, now the doggy ones are a bit different again. So, you know what? I, I'm not too sure, mate. That's a good question. It's a big P90 uh, love fest tonight in here it's one thing that yeah i've never like replaced a humbucker with a p90 in any of my guitars i don't know if yeah i don't know enough about the physical size of them to to know if i played like a you know a tom anderson guitar with them in there I, i'm not too sure so yeah <laughs> j man says uh 
any chance of a robot pedal making your pedal board man that was the that was the funniest thing i ever played that was crazy and the guy that lent it to me james if you ever see this video mate thank you again for that it was hilarious um he didn't tell me what the controls were and i think this was like this was in the early days of youtube i don't even know if i like could find any information i just plugged it in and hit go and um God, he goes, you had the volume flat out. I remember when I hit the pedal on, it was so loud and it was crazy. If I can borrow one of those at some point, I'll revisit that one. I actually had a kind of funny video scheduled. I don't want to give it away, but yeah, hang in there. There is one thing scheduled for later this year already, but I'll see if I can get my hands on one again. I'd almost love to give it a shot. I didn't know what I was doing back then with that thing. I just plugged it in and thought, here we go, give it a shot. But uh, yeah. Hey, here we go. Uh, NJ, thanks, man. Any new video games? No, but I heard, you know, for the guys and gals who enjoy a bit of uh, gaming, I heard that there's a new Vice City coming out. A new Vice City, a new Grand Theft Auto, number six. Sorry, it's probably not a Vice City one. I just was looking at this poster here. I'm a big fan of that that game in particular. I love, I love the music, man. It's weird. I never used to like 80s music, but now I'm getting older. I kind of I kind of dig it. There's something funny about it. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't often buy new games. I tend to just play old stuff a lot. So I've been going through the old Super Nintendo Ghouls and Ghosts. That's kind of like my my go-to when I'm like, I've got some time to kill. I'm like, All right, I'll play that. That's kind of like the old school one for me. And thanks, thanks again, mate. Guys, if you don't know his channel, go check out NJ. We've got Baked Alaska. It says, good morning from Fort Collins, Colorado. Welcome, mate. It's a cool name, Fort Collins. Scooby Snacks. That's right, Poo Ninja. Yeah, that's one of the uh, Fun Loving Criminal songs. They've got so many great albums. Like... It, it, it's just unbelievable and so many cool songs go check out some of their live stuff on youtube as well they got a three-piece band they've kind of got some live additional instruments while they're playing sometimes so it's like one guy is kind of on keys or bass there's a drummer and the, the guitar player singer but sometimes there's this clear other stuff going on like horns and all that but it's, it's super cool it's super cool uh hey jamal thank you man you have to <laughs> a starter for the new laptop fund mate i tell you thank you i tell you what that computer drove me crazy it was the like this computer i'm streaming with right now is old but it's so much better than that laptop for doing any of my kind of stuff i couldn't even play back my files on the computer without letting it run overnight and like down sampling it and then Oh, it was it sucks so bad. I put this video up on Patreon. Jamal will know about that. It was like the it looked like someone who'd never edited a video in their life did it. It was like the wrong clips and it was a mess. But uh, yeah, thank you, mate. I, I appreciate that. You don't have to do that. But yeah, this year will be the year of productivity on the go. I've had that for a long time. That computer. I'm gonna give that to Rihanna. Um. Rhett Scholl did a new... Oh, sorry. Did a good video on the Dan Electro lipstick pickup the other day. Yeah, they got a, definitely a different sound. They got way more of a a mellow sound than I think people give them credit for. There, there were, I, I did a comparison between that and uh, I think a Strat back in the day. And yeah, very, very different sounding pickup. Almost a little sort of mid-scooped. And thanks again, Jamal. Thank you. And NJ as well. And Tony Davis. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan says, was not swimming weather when I was in Michigan. I believe it was April also. It's brutal. I got I got to Michigan the day the snow melted it, where I was at that far north. Uh, what was it? Torch Lake. And it, yeah, I was like, man, this is cold. And it, it was nothing compared to probably what it had been, right? But I wasn't used to that. <laughs> Um, pull a reverse Hendrix as in regards to, uh, you know, so Eric Gales, I think is, he just, and like Albert King, they just play lefty, but they switch over, like they just grab a right hand guitar, flip it over. 
I want to learn how to play a bit more like that. It'll, it will be a handy thing to have in the arsenal. Even if it's just like 10 or 20 chord progressions. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I just want to be able to play some cool things upside down on right-handed guitars. It would be super cool to be able to do that, especially on the guitar search videos. Because I don't need to play much. It's just something that would, would you know, help. Um, Huey Morgan has a radio show here in the UK on the BBC Radio 6. Oh, very cool. He's such a charismatic sort of dude too. He, um, yeah, there's something really cool about that that guy. He's, he's a dude. One of my favorite sort of performers as well. Barry White. Uh, I'm thinking of getting a two notes cab M to record direct with a blues driver in front of it. What do you reckon? Great or rubbish? So I haven't actually used the that before, but I've got the two notes torpedo of oh, the Captor X. That thing is awesome. If you already own an amp with an eight ohm speaker that you can detach, I use that on every video, except for when I do amplifier reviews, when I don't, I just mic the amp up, but that thing is the best. Uh, two notes don't make junk. So just go through as many reviews of that as you can. I don't know enough about that particular model to to comment from like personal experience, but it looks pretty cool. Um, I know Brian Wampler was using one for a while, like in his videos as well. So I don't know if he actually reviewed it or not, but I remember seeing that in his videos on the on the floor. But I can speak to the Captor X. It's one of the best tools for playing guitar ever, in my opinion. It kills. I had a Kemper, I had the old Torpedo rack unit. I've tried everything. And that's my favorite for what I've got. I've got an amp, plug the speaker output into that, and that goes into this. And that's how I record, and it saves my ears. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. And you also get a power attenuator as well, so you can switch it down to half power or like bedroom volume. It's really handy. I love this stuff. You know, they did send that for the review, but it doesn't mean I, if it's no good, I don't keep stuff. Or I move it on because I don't need it. But that, that thing kicks ass. It's really good. <laughs> Love Fist. Yeah, yeah. So you've played that as well, man. I didn't, I didn't know that. Very good. So I watched a bit of uh, Steve from Boston's live stream today. And he had these picks that were 10 millimeters thick. <laughs> it was crazy. I've been playing like the, I've been playing these chicken picks for years now. They're 2.6 millimeters. They're my favorite. And I've got this like 3.5, which I also use when I can't find the 2.6. So his were like, literally like this. They were like that thick. I don't know how many people saw that today, but uh, yeah, I was like, what? How do you play with a pick like that? But yeah, there's something to be said about fat picks. I used to only play one millimeter ones, but yeah, it's like less tension on your thumb and, and hand. I know it sounds kind of weird, but that's how I feel about it. Let us know what picks you play too, because yeah, it's an interesting sort of, everyone's got a different experience and opinion on what works. And yeah, two, these two point, oh, that's not it. These 2.6 millimeter ones for me are great. I, these are the original ones, you know, back... Beef. I don't know how long, how many years ago it was now, but it was a long time ago. Chicken Pick sent a pack of three of these out. And then I bought a lot of them. <laughs> They're really good. And I think this is the original one because I tried to unscrew something with it and I chipped it. It's a bit hard to see. The camera's set to manual focus, but yeah, great, great little picks. Uh, Jamal says, I don't know how you feel about it, but the iPad Pro is a great mobile device. Don't think it would totally replace a laptop. You know, those things are awesome. The only problem I have is that it doesn't support the video editing suite that I know. So I'm forced to use a laptop. Otherwise, I would get an, an iPad without hesitation. There are alternatives to Final Cut, but when you know something really well and it, it just works for your workflow and you have to think, that's... That saves me a lot of that whole learning process. And I, I paid for all the titles you see, I paid for all of those too. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think I could probably use those with like a third party editor, but 
yeah, if it was as simple as if it was as simple to get Final Cut on an iPad as it was on a on a, like one of their computers, it would be a no-brainer. I would absolutely do that. Uh, Benjamin says I've been listening to Billy's strings. Uh, if hardcore blues grass is a thing, he's definitely it. Okay, cool, man. I I don't know who that is, but um, yeah, I'll make a note of that. Let me just. Let me just copy this, put it into a little notepad here. Always like finding new stuff. Thank you. Um, sorry, the chat just moved a whole lot. Let me scroll back up. I've got Gary from Dublin. Welcome, mate. I used to play the wish you were here intro upside down on a right-handed guitars had everyone fooled i could play backwards <laughs> i can only play like a, a handful of things upside down and not very well it's not something that i i practice it's just from right-handed player going here check this out oh okay you know so uh, i actually want to spend a bit of time with one i'll, I'll see what i can do I, i'd like to get better at that it'd be cool uh Krenner says he loves his captor x it's good. I'm glad. I, I love mine. I think it's one of the best things ever. You know, as great as the Kemper is for, like, recalling a sound that's yours, it it's just, there's too much of that option paralysis thing. I've said that before. Like, any digital modeling, anything, has a lot of options. And I always find myself fiddling. But with that, I plugged it into the computer, copied my sound from my old uh, two notes rack unit, unplug the usb and I've, I've i plug it in in like i don't know maybe once every four months to the computer just to update the firmware i just unplug it you don't need to have it connected you don't need to do anything once you've got it set up you can forget about it nah, that's what i love about it um ooh, the chat just went flying <laughs> I can't have a computer or smartphone in the same room as my guitars. YouTube is too distracting. It is. It happens to me too, man. I, I watch a whole lot of stuff. It's just, uh, it, it's one of, one of the great learning tools though as well, depending on, you know, you're right. I, that's why I don't really like modeling amps that require your phone because it, you got your phone there. Like, of course, you're going to just fiddle with it. If you get a message, you're going to put the guitar down, you know, just... The only thing I like doing with a phone is if I have to stream music to something. That's it. That That's cool. Like if I'm jamming at the same time through a practice amp or something, I, you can get away with that. But uh, yeah. Hey Shane, did you ever gig with a modeler and in-ear monitors? And what are your thoughts about it? I did. So with, a, with the in-ear monitors, I actually had, when I first got uh, tinnitus or tinnitus, however you want to say it, this was going back a while, but I was really paranoid about it getting worse because one of my friends was like debilitated by it. And thankfully it never got any worse, even all these years later, like 15 years later. Um, so there's a few things about that that kind of sucks and there's a few things that are kind of good. They really do reduce the overall volume of the gig and you can hear yourself sing fine, but you need a secondary microphone at least one other microphone that's being fed into your inner ear monitors so you can hear what's going on around you. Otherwise, if you can just hear yourself sing with earbuds in, you can't hear your guitar properly, you can't hear the drums properly, and you can't hear the bass. It does something really strange to just the acoustics. So your instinct is to just crank up the inner ear monitors, and they go really loud, which is just as damaging as being in a room full of loud music. So... At the end of the day, it's just not worth it. I, I would say almost get used to wearing earplugs that you can... There's plenty of good earplugs that aren't expensive. I use Fender branded ones. I used, Before those, I used Heroes. I, I would still use Heroes, but I can't find them anywhere. They're really great. And um, they sell them at different d decibel reduction increments. So you can get them like minus... Oh, I can't remember. Is it minus like 20 something, minus 30 or whatever? And it really drops the volume. So you can get ones that kind of work and you can still kind of hear the top end. You've just got to get used to it. There's no easy way. And I found the same problem with the inner ear monitors. I could never, 
I never loved using them. Um, what was the other question about? Sorry, the uh, modelers. I, so yeah, I've gigged with the Kemper, which I couldn't stand because if you don't have that dialed up with your with a pedal board, it's near impossible to use. You've got to just fiddle with it and then change the volume and it's a nightmare. I, I never want to use a, a system like that again live. I much prefer using a floor, digital floor pedal kind of thing because it's it's in front of you. Even though there might be some menu diving there, uh, I've tried the Moore or the Moore, sorry, G two hundred. That was okay um, until you have to menu dive. But if you can just look at it and turn the volume up or down, then you're good to go. I still prefer in a live context using the American sound pedal with a reverb pedal and my regular overdrive effects. If I have to go directly into the PA, because you've got tangible controls, you can see everything, you can adjust things on the fly. There's no menu diving. So for me, that works the best, but yeah, it really comes down to the situation you're in. If you're at a place where you're playing solo, it probably doesn't matter, but if you're in a place where the PA sucks or the guy playing next to you is really loud and you, you have to get right behind to turn the volume of the Kemper up or whatever it is you're using. You want something that's just right in front of you. So uh, that, that would be my suggestion. Oh, sorry, the Pepsi's doing its damage right now. <laughs> no, man, Derek Trucks is a beast. Yeah, what a great player. Uh I, uh, Steve says, I saw Steve's video. Those picks are crazy thick, but look really cool. They do look really cool. I'm not sure I paid 45 euros for a pick, but um, they do look amazing. They they look really, really cool. So yeah, good on him. I, I thought that they did look great and he was shredding as he always does. So obviously it, he loved the feel of them and, and that's what it comes down to. And the thing is with expensive picks, this is the other side of the point. You know how many of these chicken picks I've lost? One. <laughs> because you're very, very cautious about they, they cost far more than a normal Jim Dunlop, so you make sure you don't lose them. Uh, so yeah, I think if you spend forty five euros on a on a guitar pick or thirty, what's that like eighty bucks? <clears throat> it's going to um, you're gonna make sure you don't lose it. At least I, I'm a tight ass. I, I would be like, I'm not losing this. Um, hello from Greece. Can a better quality guitar actually help me improve my technique? I have a crappy 25 year old Squire Fender. It's probably a pretty good guitar, mate. Um, and I found it hard on practicing on it. Should I invest in a better one? Um, all right. So my first instinct is to say, take it into a guitar shop and see if it needs a setup. Sometimes if you've never had your guitar set up, the strings could be way too high, making it really hard to play. The frets could be worn, making it really hard to play. The strings could be really old, which makes it awful to play as well. The neck could have a bow in it, making frets sort of fret out. But the answer to that, if it's a playable Squire, I could gig with a, a Squire guitar, it wouldn't affect my playing. So... It comes down to how well is the or how good is the guitar set up. Uh, whether that's any guitar, a Fender can play bad, or a Gibson if it's not set up correctly, or a PRS. But I, my instinct is take it into a shop that you trust, and there's an actual person that does this sort of work. It might cost you, I, I don't know, oh you're from Greece, so I don't know. Say it costs you twenty five euros to have it set up. At least you know it's fine. And if you can give them some incentive into why it's hard to play, like, oh, I don't like the, the height of the strings or it needs to go up. Sometimes they're too low, which can also make it really hard to play. We played a guitar overseas that had the action so close to the fretboard, it was unplayable. So these are the things that you need to take into account. And sometimes if the frets are really worn in a particular way, they can kind of, kind of fix them by giving them like what they call a fret dressing. It kind of shapes them a bit better. So there's a lot that could be done to get it to work, but a Squire guitar isn't a piece of junk. Um, look, there's exceptions to that. If if there's something seriously wrong with it, at least you'll know. So spend 25 euros or whatever it costs in your part of the world to get a guitar tech at a shop to just to set it up properly with new strings and check 
check the frets, check the neck, see if it, there's anything wrong with the way that it's sitting. Sometimes they need more relief, like a bit of a bit of a curve inwards or upwards, as opposed to just being pulled down, because that can be problematic on a Strat too. So yeah, try doing that. I, my instinct is just take it in, say, is this playable? Or if you've got another friend who's a good guitar player, or, or more advanced, I should say, right? Like, this is what I've done before. If I've had a problem with an amp, I'm like, hey, do you mind playing this? Because you're great on guitar. <laughs> and then I get a sense of what it sounds like. Especially in the early days, I did that a lot. I was like, hey, can you try this and see what you think? So you've got a friend who plays or is, has more experience with it, hand it over to them and see what happens. Because I've had amps I wasn't that impressed by, and then a friend of mine got on it. And it's like, oh, so that's how that sounds. So... Yeah, take it into a shop, get it looked at. That's my two cents. Let's have a quick drink. All right. Flipty Doo says, my neighbors are happy. Happier now I have the, is it the Fryette PS100? I don't know what that is. Is that some sort of attenuator or something? Let's have a look. It is. It's some sort of... Oh, it's like a reactive load thing, is it? Oh, it is an attenuator. Very cool. Pete Thorne's done a video of it. I'll have to check it out. Cool. Um, I used to play bass upside down decades ago. My fingers had to unlearn everything. Yeah, it's funny for me. Bass doesn't really make that much of a difference. I think... Well, I should say for blues at least, they're all the same patterns either way you look at it a lot of the time. So I don't I don't struggle that much playing blues upside down on a bass. But when it comes to playing definitive songs, that's where it gets it gets really tricky cuz you got to think more. I go on like an autopilot mode when I play bass. It's sort of like you just you just know the runs. You don't have to think about it too much, but yeah, I I totally get that. Especially if you've been playing a long time. I I just you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a bass hack, but I love it. Um, yeah, here you go. So I've just scrolled down, or the chat just flew to the bottom here. Everyone's saying that old Squire guitars are great. So yeah, I go get it checked out. Take it in somewhere. It's, it's worth getting it done. It's the same old thing, right? Like your skills aren't dependent so much on the gear there, there is a point where it can hinder you to some extent but yeah you give a great player a good playable guitar and it will sound great doesn't matter what brand it is or all that sort of stuff uh did you see Jim uh, Lil's video debunking Tomewood. I, you know what? I did see some of that. It was while I was away. I think I saw. Um, that was the one where he had like. Was it like no? It was just pickups, right? Strung between like two lengths of like a, two desks, basically, right? Was it that one? I did. I did see one of them. It was. It was pretty cool. It's just. A, oh, I don't know if I saw. Maybe that's the one. I'm not too sure, but. I'll double check that one. I, I can't really recall, but I do remember watching one. I thought to myself, oh, this, this looks like the ultimate test. So it probably was that one. Yeah, interestingly enough, on one of the Guitar Search Saturdays, we came across a Squire from a point in time I'd never seen before. And it's going to be featured in one of the, the shop videos. It's pretty nice. So yeah, I think it was... Was it a? Uh, I can't remember exactly, but it, we we saw so many great guitars. But it's coming up. <laughs> I got to check out Derek Trucks. I've seen Derek Trucks play live. He's great. I've been listening to him for like twelve years. Um, yeah, he's a monster player. I saw him with Clapton years ago, and he was. He was, a, he was a great player. No questions about it. I've got pretty much most of their albums from one point in time to... 
Um, Deja Voodoo says, finally snagged a Japanese Squire, seven and a quarter inch spec radius neck. Dare I say, custom shop level. Ooh, very cool. <laughs> Dare I say. <laughs> I like that term. Um, now I see why everyone goes goo goo gucky about them. Well, but yeah, there you go. That's a good example of that. That was kind of like how I felt about the old Epiphone casinos back in the day, man. That was such a great guitar. Um, I, I didn't feel the same whatsoever with the, the latest ones. Uh, Simon Park, I'm refu- Oh, sorry. Uh, I got a new Squire Classic Vibe uh, Hollow Body in Blonde. It's a beautiful guitar, plays like a dream, albeit the pickups are to be desired. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Usually the Classic Vibes make pretty great pickups. I've gigged with the, I don't, not that one, but the 60s and the 50s ones before, and they, they're pretty good. Uh, Adam says, your best guitar amp and effect. So, best amp, just in terms of all-round playability, is the Marshall DSL-40. It's awesome. Great clean channel. You don't even need pedals if you don't want to use them, right? It's phenomenal. But I also really love my Blues Deluxe. I have a feeling there's, there might be another amp showing up pretty soon. I, I want to uh, mix up the the sounds back here and i also want an amp that i can take that's got a particular type of sound i don't want to give it away because uh, there's only one person who knows about this at the two actually that know about this at the moment but i'm seriously considering get i've wanted one of these for a while so uh, it's one of the amps i haven't had and it's affordable you know in comparison to a lot of the the fancy amps from from the same brand but i would say look the, the Marshall's probably my best all-rounder. The pedal, hands down, is the VS Audio Royal Flush Dual Overdrive. It's so good. Um, and my favorite guitar at the moment, I'm loving my Strat. I've been playing that. You know what? I haven't played guitar much in the last sort of like three weeks, maybe longer. So I need to, I need to start practicing more. But um, that's what I was playing the most before I took a break and, and went away. Uh... Oh wow! As as roll is it? Sorry, I bought an SX Strat for seventy US dollars because of you. Very cool. And I know Jamal also bought a. He got a bass from SX as well, which is great. And happy birthday to Jamal for, uh, I guess it's like seven days ago now. So thanks. Uh, happy birthday, mate! Everyone can wish him happy birthday. Uh, and I want my two dollars. Thank you, mate, for the super chat here. I'm an old guy, but still new to the guitar. Just bought my first real tube amp, a DSL twenty, with the. Uh, 112 cab should what should my first pedal be maybe delay yeah get it get a delay pedal that's or a wah that's all you'll need if you if you like the wah sound but delay would be the way to go that's the only effect i will put on the amp when i use my dsl 40 uh because you've got the ability to turn the effects loop on and off which means you don't need a pedal board with that amp you can just play it and the same with the 20 the 20 rocks it's such a great sounding amp so um yeah, either analog or digital. It really depends on the sound you're going for. I would almost suggest if you're not sure what you like, delay sound-wise, get a Boss DD... What are they up to now? The DD7 or 9 or something. That's got like every delay effect and those are really good and they sound great going into the effects loop. So you can't go too far wrong with, with that pedal. That's a good starting point. And then maybe down the track, if you only use an analog delay, you can find another one. But... There's no real reason to. Those boss pedals are, are great. So yeah, congrats, man, and um, thanks for the super chat. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll love that amp, man. It's it's great with pedals, or you can just turn it up. <laughs> it's so good. Um, Johnny says hi, Shane. Just wondering, do you ever transcribe your own music or any music? No, nah, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't really have the the inclination to sit down and transcribe music for people I, I don't learn music when i learn stuff I, I i'm a visual learner so i learned some new stuff recently that i've i've got a list of songs i actually just before i went away i've started like getting stuff under my fingers that is a real challenge for me i got a video i'm going to do a video series about this because 
it's still hard for me to learn stuff, but the way I learn is very visual, but also very audible. I don't get a lot of benefit out of learning from from notation. I get why people want to learn tabs, and if you can read them and it's productive for you, go ahead. Everyone learns in a different way, but I'm all the stuff I learned was from ear or from seeing it and hearing it. That, that's kind of, for me, that works really well, um, or what works as well as it can for me, at least, anyway. But even when I'm learning new stuff, I don't go to the tabs because I feel like that stuff sometimes isn't right. I've tried that in the past, and if I'm really stu- stuck on a part, I might look it up, but... Um, generally if you, you, there's so many great instructional videos from great players and even if it's not 100% the same as the album it sounds great so um, yeah it, it's sort of every, yeah I, I'm not going to spend time doing that I got yeah I got other stuff I'd rather spend my time on but thanks thanks and thanks again uh, for the super chat uh, I want my $2 I'll, I'll give you 2 bucks back are you sponsored by Pepsi? I wish. If I was, I'd be balling. All right. Ah, oh, there we go. So Anton says, still loving the Kalen Pure Sky. 25 pounds after you bought, uh, after you did your review. That's, that's such a great pedal. A little while back, I got to do all their jewel pedals, which I got a couple of them up there, actually. It was great revisiting that those pedals effects you know and they got new ones as well but a lot of their two-in-ones have the pure sky well they have one of their other classic overdrives in one and it's it's super cool so i'm glad you're liking it that's great uh, i have made in china fender modern player telecaster bass and there's nothing wrong with it i wouldn't be surprised like yeah i, I don't think there's anything wrong with guitars made almost anywhere at the moment this is the thing like companies don't necessarily they a lot of companies can't make junk because if they do there's reviews instantly wherever they're sold or there's videos made about how crap something is so you know i had my i was a real big skeptic of harley benton until i saw them and i went now i get it you know until you get one in your hands you go oh it's probably a piece of crap and i'm still like that i see you know, certain dudes review guitars and I'm like, why do they even review this? This is probably a piece of crap. And then like four years later, I'll see him. I'm like, oh, it's actually all right. So yeah, there's not a lot of junk. There's not a lot of junk. Hey, we've got Styles Blues here. Well, well, yeah. welcome, mate. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining in. Um, How about the new Fender Deluxe Reverbs? I have the blonde one with the Celestian. Yeah, I, I have no problems with Deluxe Reverbs. I almost I almost kind of want another one of those at some point. I, I shouldn't have... Ross, if you have my old one, mate, give it back. No, no. Um, yeah, just great amps. I don't think their quality control is bad or anything, if that's what you're asking. I think they're great. They also make good Fender Special runs, like limited edition ones with different speakers. There was one with like a redback speaker in it, which sounded so good. It was this slate gray one. I reviewed it a while back. Maybe the best sounding deluxe reverb I've ever played. You know, you can take any deluxe and change the speaker and it's going to sound great. But that was a real, really special combination. Uh, Kilo Tango says, VS Audio Royal Flush is great. It is. It's just the most usable two-in-one dirt pedal. It's so good. That and the, the Nordvang Gravity is great, but that's so much more expensive. I, I don't use it anywhere near as much as the Royal Flush. You know, I, I wouldn't have probably have purchased the the Nordvang Gravity. It's a super expensive pedal, but you know, if I lost my Royal Flush, I had to buy. If I had to just pay for one, I'd buy one. It's super cool. You know, I'm fortunate enough just to sometimes to trade my time for a pedal or whatever the case is. But great, great pedal. You know, both of my pedal boards down here have one on it. <laughs> um, T says hey Shane welcome back did you get a chance to do, check out the Fender Custom Shop 70th anniversary broadcaster no no I haven't seen one of those yet let me check it out let's have a look 
No, but it looks great. It looks really nice. <laughs> if I get a chance to check out one of these, mate, I will. So uh, hang in there. Look at any possums flying around here. Can't go wrong with a good clean boost. A tuna or a looper. Agreed. The tuna should be the first pedal on any pedal board. Not a clip-on tuner, an actual pedal tuner. That's always my recommendation. Then you can get carried away with everything else. Uh, I, I love clean boosts. One of the most underrated things you can get on a board. You know, I've got one on my gigging board, which is the Mr. Boost pedal. I, it doesn't really matter. Um, what's the brand? Um, uh, Citec make a good bo uh, boost pedal I've been using for a long time as well. <laughs> Dr. Rick needs to sell a guitar and buy some clothes so he doesn't dig in scrubs. Hey, that's his that's his thing. He comes straight from work, straight from Dr. Rock. That's that's his move. Um, oh, the chat just flew down. Sorry if I missed anybody's question. We might go for about another 15 minutes or so. It's starting to get late. I know the later it gets the more fried the conversation goes <laughs> from my side here. Fender Blues Deluxe is the most underrated amp out there. It's so good. It really is. Like, I don't love the stock speaker, but once you sort of... You can use them until they sound okay, those stock speakers, but mine's got the swamp thing that I put in there. And it's, it's great. I have a hard time finding any amp that I want to replace that amp. You know, when I've done that before, I, I, I had an, one from years ago. And then I ended up getting, I think it was like a, what was it? The Supersonic 60 and I flipped that. It could be, I could be wrong. I can't remember the exact chain of events. Uh, it might've been a two rock I actually bought back then. And then I was like, man, I missed that amp. And so I sold the two rock, got another one of these. And I've had it ever since. It's been awesome. It's so reliable as well. Like, yeah, great, great amplifiers. And loud enough, good, clean headroom. You know, they never struggle. You can just keep turning them up. It's it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, this is from uh, Nef Nefal, is it? Hey, Shay, uh, hey, is it safe? To oh, hang on. Is it safe to do, or do you have any experience to buy guitars broad because lack of left-handed guitars in my country? Uh, is it ironic that most left-handed guitars build here or only sell abroad oh that's that's a bit of bad luck man um so i've bought many guitars overseas before and there's like if you buy a bolt-on neck guitar you can literally take it home in your suitcase or if you've got two bags it's really easy to do bolt-on guitar necks are awesome i, I actually i've written an article about this uh on guitarcaseguide.com where how i get my guitars back without having to get a hard case. Look, if a guitar comes in a hard case, you can get them back as well, but it's more of a pain when you travel to carry a guitar in a massive case. And I've done that twice. Once with my 52 reissue Telecaster and another time with a GNL ASAT Classic Tally. And it sucks because it's so big. Anytime I get a guitar now, it's a bolt-on neck one, put it in the suitcase, get it home. So um, yeah, just... Just do that. You, you'll be fine. If you're traveling with someone, maybe they can put the neck in their case. You can put the body in a gig bag or in a you know in a top or something. You can just fold it up and put it in. Not fold up the, the guitar, but fold up your shirt around the, the guitar and just put it in your suitcase. That's exactly what we did coming home. <laughs> um, uh. Have I tried the Ampero 2 Stomp? Let me have a look. <laughs> you know what? I owe Hot Tone, uh, or Ho Tone, however you say it, an apology. This came in like two months ago, and I haven't done the video. Um, I just got too consumed doing all the other stuff I did in December to get it done. But um, you know what? I haven't actually checked this out yet, so I'll have a quick look at it. I like the all-in-one Ampero. I think it's pretty good. I don't know... You know what? I haven't actually looked into what this does. 
other than what it says in the box here, but it looks pretty cool. I haven't taken this out to look at it yet. This is one of three pedals left to do, so let's do this. There it is. Actually, can I bring this closer? There we go. So um, my answer right now is I haven't tried it, but I'm going to do some sort of video about it. it looks looks good. Is this going to work? Manual focus, Panasonic. All right, we're good. <laughs> so hang in there. It'll. Oh man, it's Pepsi. Far out. It's embarrassing. All the burps. Um, so yeah, just hang in there. It'll it'll be on its way. Hey, we got Robert Baker. Welcome, man. Hope you're doing well. I commented on your um, Blues Licks thing on Instagram. It was like Ingve Malmstein was playing blues there for a moment, mate. You were you were just like, and then you went into the blues at the end. It was super cool. What kind of cables do you use? Philip Knight uses a very expensive cable. They're like seventy nine dollars a piece. I I couldn't justify spending seventy nine bucks on cables. I used Diodario once. Um, I've got a few. But my main ones are, where are they? You know, since I've been back, I haven't, I haven't shot a video, so they're not out at the moment. And I'm not sure where they are. I've also got one that I was sent a while back from um, Rattlesnake Company Cable. They, they make like these guys. But I don't like this as much as the Diodarios, just in terms of the way that it moves. It sounds kind of funny, but... Diodario cables are kind of like, they're floppy on the ground. I like that. I much prefer that over ones that are a bit more sort of like, they don't bend as much. Uh, great cable though, but yeah, most of mine are Diodarios. I've also got old Guitar Center ones I've had for like, you know what? I don't even know how long. I think th since 2008 and they're still going and they were $9 each. You shouldn't be needing to spend $80 on cables. That's ridiculous. The only thing you might get out of them is longevity but again, I've had cables I spent 10 bucks or less on each and they're still going. So I always say anything with a Neutrik connector on either side, you, you're good to go. That should generally last you quite a while. And the funny thing is, I learned this from a guitar shop years ago. I had a, I had a cable, I think it was a Planet Waves cable and it failed and I said, oh man, I've had it like a year. It's probably, he goes, no, they've got a lifetime warranty. No one brings them back. If you get you have a cable and it's got a lifetime warranty and it fails, you get another one or a replacement of equal type. But he goes, no one ever brings cables back. They always just go, uh, I'll just get another one. Everybody does it. So find anything with a lifetime warranty, man. You're laughing. But don't go spending 80 bucks on cables. It, it does nothing for your sound. It's just a, you know, no offense to Philip. I, I love the guy, but yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. I'd rather put 70 bucks into strings. Like like a box of them. Um, I have a Fender Strat with classic uh, CS69s uh, that I love. Oh, Custom Shop 59, sorry, that I love, but practice most of the time with my 60s classic vibe. Yeah, they're, they're great guitars, man. They're so cool. Um, yeah, they, they're, they're really cool. Let me just double check something real quick. Um, I'm trying to find CS69s. Yeah, Custom Shop 69s, I I'm, I'm take it, they're the pickups, right? I don't know if I've actually played a guitar with those in there or not. I may have, but yeah, not 100% certain. Very cool. Have I tried the Fender Performer Series? I don't think so. A bit out of the loop with a lot of this, the stuff. I, I kind of got consumed in... Uh, like November and December doing like all those videos and I've like lost track of what's just come out or whatever and no I haven't tried these either so I'll see what I can do I know where I borrow like 90% of what you see on the channel from Sky Music here they've got a whole lot of new lefties and new Fender stuff and all that kind of thing so once I get fired up and ready to go again I'll I'll see what I can find You say using the Panasonic? I am. So this one's the S5. I'm over to full frame on the most part now. I've got a couple of Sony cameras as well. 
but there's something about the panace like i'm a huge camera nerd i have a another channel like a tech one i love sony for their autofocus and their picture quality but they're kind of boring to use panasonic give you all the all the pro features and they're like a third of the price <laughs> and you get the same result as long as you're happy to learn how to use it they were more of a manual intervention camera so yeah the s5 has replaced my like panasonic gh5s except for when i'm outdoors walking around there's a camera for everything for me I, i'm a big camera nerd Cameras for me, is, they're like guitars, you know, and amps and all that kind of stuff. I'm a big, I got a, I'm a big nerd when it comes to camera gear. So if anyone's got camera questions, let us know. It's good to be back online. It's been ages since uh, I've done a live stream. It's been over a month. So thanks for hanging around. And I know my channel hasn't been the most exciting over the last, <laughs> I don't know, like three weeks. It's just been like two pedal videos a week just getting through all the stuff I said I'd do. And I have some pretty fun ideas for videos and the Guitar Search Saturdays will be a, a good fun adventure, hopefully for everybody as well, doing the ones in Hawaii there. So yeah, it should be cool. I'm already sort of teeing up the next big plan. So um, more news on that to follow. Cordial brand use nitric connectors, cost less than 10 euros, depending on the length, of course. Oh, there you go, cool. Um, yeah, I, I really don't think guitar cables make a huge difference. Look, some of the cheap and nasty ones aren't great. Like, if you get one from, you know, like when I bought my PRS SE, it had this cable in there that you take it out and you throw it in the bin. It, you can't use them, they're so noisy, right? Which means... There's a couple of term there's a couple of terms for noisy, but with those particular cables, if they touch the ground anywhere, you hear it through your amp and it's just you can touch the cable with your hand and you'll hear that coming out of your amp as well. Those are like disgraceful. I don't even know why they are included in a in a guitar like that. No guitar company should be creating crap cables like that. Just don't include one and save forty cents on the end product. Yeah, so that for me, I, I don't understand that, but anything that's most cables that are at a guitar shop should be okay, or if you buy it online or whatever, just look for the cable. That that's the way I, I, the the connector, I should say. Sorry, but again, those nine dollar guitar center ones. I'll show you. I've had these for years. I've had them for so long. And they've got the, the Neutric connectors, little blue ends on them. Livewire. That must be the name of them. They're still going strong. <laughs> but it's also how you treat the stuff too, right? So I know Dr. Rick also uses fairly expensive ones. He uses uh, George L's. And I think the reason why is they've lasted him a very long time. So there might be some advantages to longevity or warranty or whatever. Hey, we got Guitar Man Forty Five just became a member. Thank you, mate. Welcome to the notification squad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, if you uh, if you want to stay up to date with the, oh, I'll mention this now. If you want to stay up to date with the Guitar Search Saturdays, click the bell. I've got far less pedal videos coming up. The rest of what I'm going to start working on as of the next day or two will be um, back to fun stuff for me and hopefully for you too. So thank you. Uh, Sweetwater replaced one of their house brand cables, Proco, that failed on me. No questions asked. Well, there you go. Yeah, a lot of cable companies will give you a, a lifetime warranty, and Sweetwater also give you a, a warranty. Like, yeah, obviously, I shaved my head, right? I've got, I, this is a good example of this. I bought a sh uh, like a head sh uh, shower he head shaver, whatever they're called, like an electronic one, a cordless one. And um, the company from which i bought it from like the shop gave me a two-year warranty on it and i had it a month and it failed so i took it back in they just gave me another one and i also got a five-year warranty through the company that makes the thing so even after that you can still get it replaced so yeah keep your receipts and all that kind of stuff and guitar man 45 thank you again mate i appreciate it thank you eric says love your channel robert been subscribed for many months my top 10 youtubers probably very close to <laughs> yeah man robert's a dude he's such a cool guy uh, i think he, he and i are while we're he's a he's a great guitar player and 
much more, uh, you know, he can fly around the fretboard and I, I can't do any of that. I think he, he and I are very similar in many ways outside of, uh, outside of music. He's a, he's a top dude and hopefully we can catch up at some point. 2022, man, if it all works out. Robert, if you're still around. Come to Australia, mate. It's great. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, but yeah, I've been sub to Robert for a, a long time as well. He's, he's a great guy. And we actually did this massive jam a while back called the Lockdown Shuffle. If you want to see him like cut loose to some 12 bar, um, Eddie Van Halen style mixed with whoever, go go check it out. He, he was... He shreds at the end. It's, so, it's super cool. And I was lucky enough to have a lot of my favorite YouTube plays and just great guitarists from all around the world on that. It's like 12 minutes of noodling. Uh, I'll, put, I'll share it on the feed after we're done, but I, I think you get a kick out of it. Um, oh, the riots are outside your house. Far out. Where, where are you, um, Bendelschnitz? I would assume Germany, but that doesn't sound right. Oh, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm out of touch with the news, so. Uh, thanks, Eric. I appreciate that, mate. Now, Robert's a, he's a special guy on guitar, mate. No questions about it. I consider myself a blues clunker. That's, that's you know, I, I'm always trying. And I, that that's, he's a serious, serious player, Robert. He's one of the best. He really is. Um. <laughs> Yeah, play guitar and have fun. Yeah, that's it. That's what it all comes down to. And everyone's got their own style. I'm, I'm sure, like, the guys that blow my mind, you know, I'm sure people watch anybody of any caliber and there's always someone who aspires to play like somebody or that aren't as proficient or are still having fun and enjoying the process. I just love watching great players. I also love watching great players where it looks easy. It doesn't look forced or overly rehearsed. And that's what I see from Robert. He's a... He's a very fluid player, and he's put the, the 10,000 hours in, so it, it shows. It really does. <sighs> oh, Robert's still here. I take all of that back. No, no, I'm going to kid. Um, yeah, Rob's, Rob's a pro. No, no doubt about that. But um, all right, guys, we're going wrap to this, wrap this up. This has been about an hour and a half, so uh, it's getting late. It's going to be 12.30 a.m., Although the pre-workout I shouldn't have drank before is still going through the system. I need to unwind. Otherwise, I'm going to be up till um, probably 4 o'clock in the morning. But being that we're in the US recently, 10 milligram melatonins. <laughs> Just counter it. We can't buy that stuff here. It's hilarious. 16.5 um, uh, bar blues. 16.5 bar blues. Is that like some sort of weird... Thing I'm not aware of. Bluesy tone. Oh, you like t bluesy tone. Thank you, SB. Appreciate that, mate. CC Music. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining in, everybody. Um, thanks for becoming a channel member as well to uh, Guitar Man 45. Thanks, everybody, for subscribing, watching the videos, all the super chats, all that kind of stuff. And I'll catch you very soon. I'm going to start. I'm going to have a guitar search Saturday. It's coming up Saturday night. So around the same time this went up, that'll be the first of a few. <laughs> and uh, it's such a great store. I hope you like it. Uh, none of that trip was sponsored either. So uh, yeah, if you enjoy it, share it around or leave a comment on it or whatever. I might do it as a live premiere. It's so close to being finished. I just need to fix one little part and it's done. But it's come up great. And if you missed the last one, go watch it. It's a similar kind of style, except we're, we're somewhere else. It was It was super cool. Ian says, love the channel, beginner guitarist, learning R&B, Neo Soul, but I love Prince. Prince is great, man. Trying to find an amp, Orange Cross, 20RT, Vox, Pathfinder, 10. You know, um, those Vox, Pathfinder, 10s, the, the ones that have the reverb circuit, if you can find one of those, they're really great practice amps. The Fender Blues Juniors are way too loud for home practice amp, but if you plan on playing live, they're good. All right, everybody, take care. Thanks again for hanging out. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again. And I will be, hopefully have, I, I don't know if there'll be another video before the weekend, but um, yeah, I'll see how we go. 
I want to finish these guitar sets Saturdays. They're fun. I should have probably have shared some teasers. Maybe, maybe we'll do another one coming up. All right, guys. Take care. Thank, thanks again and uh, all the best.